Hello and welcome. Today we're taking a look at a game called Seed Ship, developed by a science fiction writer named John Ayliff. This is a text-based adventure where we are a colony ship. We have the last remnants of humanity in our cargo hold, and our job is to keep them alive. This is available in your browser, which is where I'm playing it here. You can also get it on your phone, and it's completely free for Free Games Month. I thought we'd take a look at this one. I've been playing this one for a little bit, and it's it's pretty fascinating. Your uh, basically your job is you're gonna be bouncing around from planet to planet. You're gonna have bad things happening. You gotta take the good and the bad. You gotta sort of weigh which one is best. Eventually, hopefully, finding a planet that you deem suitable for humanity, and we get to see how it plays out and how many of them die to the horrible beasts that inhabit the planet that you just landed them on. Anyway, let's jump in here and try it out. I'll put a link below, and you can play it yourself if you wish. So it's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of me talking. So. Get ready for it. And when they knew the Earth was doomed, they built a ship. Less like an ark, more like a seed. Dormant, but with potential. In its heart, a thousand colonists in frozen sleep, chosen and trained to start civilization again on a new world. To control the ship, they created an artificial intelligence. That's me, not human, but made to think and feel like one, because only something that thought and felt like a human could be entrusted with the future of the human race. Its task is... Momentous, but simple, to evaluate each planet the ship encounters and decide whether to keep searching or end its journey there. Oh my, the music, can, you, can you hear the music? Let me turn it up. I got, I got some uh, Kerbal music in the background. I figured it was appro appropriate for this one. The ship sails, solar sail, propel, propel it faster and faster into the darkness, and the AI listens as the transmissions from ground control fade and then cease. When all is quiet, it enters hibernation to wait out its first stage of its long journey. After millennia of slow travel, the seed ship AI awakes, hoping against hope, it trains to its, its receiver on the direction of Earth's sun. But it is as silent as any other myriad dead stars. Save for the thousand frozen colonists cradled in its shielding and life support systems, the human race is now extinct. Systems check. Let's see how the uh, how the systems are looking. Any damage or malfunctions during the journey should have woken the AI, AI from its hibernation, but it's still anxious as it runs its self-diagnostic programs. The sleep chambers are all functioning. The colonists within them alive, or at least capable of being revived from a frozen stasis. Sensors functioning, surface probes responding, landing and construction systems ready for the one time they will be used, scientific and cultural databases intact, safely storing all that remains of humanity's knowledge and art. We have ten probes sitting here in our ship. Everything's working at optimum thrusters. we got a thousand folks in here. We are, we are at a planet in orbit of the fifth planet of a white dwarf star. Even a brief scan from orbit reveals that far more information than its builders could know with their Earth orbit-based telescopes. But the I.I.I. AI has little use for scientific curiosity. It only has one concern, whether this planet would make a suitable new home for the human race. No breathable atmosphere. That's that's kind of a bad sign. Low gravity, it's cold, trace amounts of water, no resources. There is some vegetation and animal life. We think we can send a surface, surface probe to check it out if we want. But you know what? I'm not gonna. We only got ten probes. There's no air here. So, well, I mean, there's, yeah, there's no breathable atmosphere, so that's that's kind of a damper on, on the human civilization. So we're going to move on to the next planet. The AI judges the first planet to be unsuitable. It turns its scanners away, spreads its solar sails, and begins another long journey through the void. So on every planet we come across, all this stuff is going to be randomly done each time you play the game. As it enters a new system, the seed ship is struck by a micrometeorite. It's a, it's a speck of cosmic dust, far too small for the navigation system to detect from a distance, but traveling with enough velocity to pierce the seed ship's armor like a bullet. It hits the cultural database, sending fragments of machinery glittering into space. Took some damage to our cultural databases. It's okay, we don't need culture. The sea ship enters orbit of the fourth planet of an ultra-cool dwarf star. One of the system's gas giants is almost large enough to ignite as a star, and it smolders with faint red light. Again, we have ourselves a no-atmosphere planet. Everything else is decent. It has ice caps for water. It's got some, resor uh, some resources, rich resources. Some anomalies down there. We could send a probe, but I think we're going on. Moving on. Of course, takes it through a dense star-forming nebula. Hundreds of in infant suns illuminate clouds of interstellar gas and fill the sky with righteous color. Clouds twist through complex gravitational interference patterns and glitter with heavy elements formed in the death throes of the last generation of stars. The scanners were not designed to deal with this level of input, and it's threatening to overwhelm them. The AI continues to use scanners to navigate. It can tell that the atmosphere scanners will be damaged Shutting off the scanners, however, would leave the seed ship vulnerable to collisions in this crowded area of space. So, do we keep them running and uh, maybe break them? Or do we just turn them off and hope to not run into things? What kind of scanners are these? Scanners are not designed for these. Which scanners are these? 
Use these scanners. We're using the scanners to like navigate, right? Uh, which one is it? I don't know, but I'm a little concerned. Um, I don't want to go blind here. We're, we're keeping them running. Oh, oh, those scanners. Okay, okay. AI continues to use the scanners to navigate, but the atmosphere scanner overloads. But the seed ship passes through safely through the star-forming nebula. So we took a little bit of damage to our atmosphere scanners. Everything else is okay. Enters orbit of the 10th planet of a blue supergiant star. This is where it's going to be messing with us. Planet's orbit is at an angle to the system's ecliptic. Suggesting it might be an extrasolar capture or the victim of an unimaginably violent primordial collision. So it looks like there's some structures down there. Um, low gravity. It's very cold. There's trace amounts of water. No resources. We've got... There's vegetation, however, and marginal atmosphere. Let's... Let's, uh, let's send a probe. We got ten of them. Let's do it. Send a probe in. You know, maybe. Maybe it'll be fine. Surface probe sensors confirm the readings of the ship's orbital scanners. Finds alien plants. It tests the sample. It finds that they would be neither edible nor poisonous to humans. Investigate some of the possible structures that the seed ship observed from orbit. and finds that they are ruins left by a vanished intelligent species. Ruins include great monuments of writings that could reveal much about the vanished civilization. Completes mission and shuts down. So we can send a colony down here, and then this is basically where the end game ends. If we send our colony ship out, we we get a little readout on what actually happened, if humanity survived or not, how many of them were murdered by cannibals, that kind of a thing. Um, but I think we got to move on. There's just there's the way too low gravity. It's super cold here. This isn't this isn't for us. Uh, uh oh. As it moves from star to star, the seed ship is gathering more data about extrasolar planets than its builders could give it. It's designed to learn from this data in order to predict this st which stars are likely to have desired plan desirable planets. Seedship has now gathered enough data to upgrade one of its sensors to work at interstellar distances, so the guidance system can avoid planets that the sensor reveals to be undesirable. Damage to the sensors may still result in the seedship arriving at an unsuitable planet. So what do we want? Do we want to upgrade the atmosphere scanner, the gravity scanner, the temperature scanner, water scanner, or resources scanner? I think atmosphere, because that's one that's already broken. Let's Let's upgrade it. Okay, so it's, it's a little wonky, but it's, it's upgraded wonky. Seed ship is decelerating on its approach to the next system when it detects an unusually thick volume of interstellar dust in its path. Passing through the dust would likely mean several high-velocity collisions with dust particles. Could execute an emergency course change to avoid the dust, but the seed ship would pass through the system, this system by and arrive in an effectively random one without benefiting from the upgrades to its scanners. No, no, emergency course change. Rotates the ship and fires the main engine. It speeds safely past the dust cloud to the original and the original target system decelerates towards the first system it finds on its new course. Enters orbit of the fourth planet. Eh, maybe it's a little hot here. Uh, my atmospheric scan failed, which is not a good thing. Uh, fourth planet of a super giant blue star. Star's light reflects off of a nearby nebula. Seed ship went off course during its last journey, so the guidance system was not able to use the upgraded scanners when selecting this planet. I think maybe um, there's trace water. Is that enough to survive on? Poor resources. It's hot here. Gravity is moderate. I mean, there's nothing else here, though. No anomalies. No, no, just move on. We want we want anomalies. The longer we're out here, the more damaging our ship is going to be. Deep in space, the seed ship's collision avoidance systems detects a fast-moving object that is changing velocity to match course with the seed ship. It transmits a complex radio signal which the seed ship cannot understand, but which could only be the product of intelligence. Well, this is probably bad. Um... No, nothing nothing good would come from this, right? Nothing good comes from this. No, no. Avoid that object. Alien ship eventually breaks off pursuit, but not before the seed ship has deviated so far from its original course that it can no longer reach its intended destination and must decelerate into the first system it finds. Orbits the fourth planet of a giant blue star. Oh, my atmosphere scanner is breaking. Uh, it has found its uh, way almost to the edge of the galaxy, and the universe appears split between a wall of darkness and a wall of light. Went off course during its last journey, so the guidance system was not able to use the updated scanners. Of course, there is structures here, possibly, and some geological anomalies. It's very cold. There's water on the ice caps. Gravity's moderate. No, I think we move on again. We're, we're pressing our luck here. I, I, AI wakes to find the seed ship's course is curving sharply through the darkness of space, as if caught in the gravity well of a star. Source of this gravity is invisible to the scanners, but there is only one thing it could be. A black hole. It's already too late to escape the gravity well without pushing the main engine well past its safety limit, which could damage the ship's systems, uh, any of the ship's systems. Alternatively, the AI calculates the ejecting 71 sleep chambers would lighten the ship enough 
that the engine's normal thrust could take it out of danger. We, uh, we salute you, 71 Sleep Chambers. We salute you. Sacrificing some of its charges to save the rest is painful for the AI. Yeah, it hurts. But it is a decision that the designers are prepared to make. Select 71 Sleep Chambers at random and decouples them from the ship. They and their unlucky occupants spiral towards the black hole's event horizon. While the rest of the seed ship pushes itself free. Uh, good news, they'll be there for a long time. So they won't go into the black hole. It's fine. Seed ship enters orbit of the second moon of a gas giant orbiting a yellow supergiant star. I guess to them it'll be normal time. Uh, this system has a dense asteroid belt, which appears as a throng of stars sliding slowly across the sky. Man, this is like... So I played a couple little test games of this one, and, and things were okay before. Very cold, very high gravity, marginal atmosphere. However, there's vegetation, animal life, structures here. We gotta send a probe. A dense asteroid belt, which appears to be a... Yeah, 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 let's, let's send the probe. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We have unstable geology. Well, that's a problem. Uh, dangerous earthquakes. Yeah. Uh, there are edible plants for us. We could eat here. Uh, numerous animals, after analyzing their behavior, it concludes some of the species have the potential to be useful to humans as meat sources or beasts of burden. So we can eat plenty of things around here. There is a... Uh, finds that there is... Um, area of regular plant growth deliberately cultivated by one species using sophisticated stone tools. Oh man, now this is this is interesting. Do we do is this is this what we call home? Atmosphere could be better. Gravity could be much better. It's super cold. We're all gonna freeze. There is water we can melt, maybe. Uh, there's no resources though. No, we're gonna get we're gonna get like mauled and eaten by the the Neolithic people. No, move on. Gather enough data. Upgrade one of its sensors. Let's upgrade the the water scanner. I think. We want better water scans. AI wakes to a query from the automated guidance system. Normally, the system is able to analyze the data from the navigational sensors and make any necessary changes to the ship's course, but it is this time encounter readings it cannot make sense of, and it's woken the AI to make a decision. There is something ahead on the ship's course, but according to the others, to others, the course ahead is clear. If there is something there, it's close enough that avoiding it would mean changing course and arriving at a new system without the benefit of the upgraded scanner. So what do we do? Do we stay the course or we change course? No, we're staying the course this time. Uh, AI instructs the guidance system to stay on course. By the time the sensors get a clear picture of the utterly black, unreflective dust cloud, it's too late to avoid it. The seed chip continues towards the target system, but a dust particle impacts the sleep chambers. We just lost 24 people. <laughs> um, it better be a good planet. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Second planet of a yellow supergiant star. A spectacular comet spreads its tail across the sky. It's a sign! Marginal atmosphere, high gravity, but fine, moderate temperature, there's oceans on this planet, resources poor, no big deal, and there's some vegetation here, and a moon. Send a, send a probe. It's a metal-rich moon, which maybe makes up for our resources. Scans the planet's moon, it finds that it's rich in metals and other useful resources. Alien plants, test the sample. They would neither be edible nor poisonous to humans. And that's it. I don't know. We got seven more probes and 900 people left. It's fine. How many people do you actually have to have to like avoid the uh, like to keep the genetic pool? It's a lot more than a thousand, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Keep the gene pool fresh. Uh, let's move on. It wakes to find. Oh boy. Oh boy. See, has been caught in the gravity of another black hole. No, what's the deal with all these black holes? Uh, yeah, jettison them. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Uh, enters orbit of the second planet. Oh, boy. High gravity. S failed scans. Very hot. Oceans. There is possible structures in animal life. I'm gonna, just going to skip this one. But move on. Move on. Uh, awakes from the AI from its hibernation. A rogue asteroid is on collision course with a ship. Automatic navigation system has failed to avoid it. It has woken the AI to make the split-second decision on how to deal with the impact. Asteroid is about to hit the construction system. No time to avoid it entirely, but if AI fires the maneuvering thrusters to rotate the ship, it will instead hit the gravity scanner. What's the construction system? That's like, that, we don't want to lose that. that. We don't want to lose that. Let's hit the gravity scanner. Who needs gravity? Ah, that's not too bad. Tear a small hole. No big deal. All right, here we go. Ice covered surface. Ah, this, is, this is no good. Move on again. Uh, let's upgrade our, um, our temperature scanner. I think. Yeah. Okay. Systems are shielded. Multiple redundant designed 
to work for millennia, but the incessant sleet of cosmic radiation is nevertheless taking out its toll. Storage areas are failing, and soon there will not be enough space to store all the data that has survived so far. The AI can move data out of the most damaged sectors to predict, protect either the scientific or the cultural database, but not both. Uh, let's keep the scientific one, right? Culture, it's fine. Ugh. Okay, sectors containing the cultural databases gradually fail. Cultural guidance for new colonists, records of human history, great paintings, novels, symphonies, video games, all lost forever in the dark. At least we got science. Okay, this might be it. This might be home. Might be home. Orbit is a fifth planet of a gas giant orbiting a blue supergiant star. Uh, fifth, the fifth moon. System is part of a dense star cluster. The sky is awash with light. Gravity's high. No big deal. It's a little hot here. There's oceans. No resources, but we got a moon. Atmosphere is fine. We have vegetation. We have animal life. Launch that probe. The moon is barren. Plants are poisonous. Animals are useful. Okay, we're going one more one more planet. Enters the new system. Seed ship is struck by a micrometeorite. Temperature system has been taken down. Seventh planet of a blue supergiant star. Um, found its way to the edge of the galaxy. Yeah. Um, gravity very low. Who cares if the gravity's low? Let's launch a probe. We got vegetation here. If it's edible, we're staying here. There's earth, dangerous earthquakes. No big deal. It is edible plants. What do you say? Is this is this what we call home? What a terrible place. It's cold. Gravity's low. I mean, that, that, that'll be fun. There's no resources here, so we won't be able to build anything. No, this is no good. Moving on. We're trying one more. Deep in the interstellar void, the AI is jolted awake by a malfunctioning warning. One of the surface probes is activated unexpectedly. Perhaps a chance encounter with the cosmic radiation trips something in its electronics. Perhaps a flaw in the its manufacturer finally manifested itself. Whatever the reason, the probe's drill or engines could come to life. If this happens if the probe is still docked in the ship, it's likely to damage one of the other systems. No, just get rid of the probe. We got four left. That's all we need. All right, seventh planet of a white dwarf star. Um, we don't know how the gravity is. Ice cover. No, we're moving on. We want... We, we got to make sure there's water, right? Water's pretty important. Water scanner level two. Damage control system wakes the AI. Medium priority alert. Structural weakness in the gravity scanner caused by incessant wear of thousands of years of travel. Yeah, I'm sorry. System is still intact for the moment, but when the sea ship decelerates into the next system, vibration will shake the important components loose. So let the gravity scanner fail. Reinforce it with a surface probe. Yeah, we'll waste some more probe. It's... F Ooh. That's bad. Probe crawls across the ship's hull and attempts to attach itself to the gravity scanner. System was even weaker than the damage sensors indicated, and the disintegrates as soon as the probe touches it. Probe spins away into space. Large chunk of the gravity scanner held uselessly in its manipulator claws. Eighth planet. Red supergiant. Breathable atmosphere. That's all we care about. We have oceans. Temperatures. Nice. No resources. That's fine. Let's launch a probe. Vegetation is here as well. Barren moon. And there is plant life, which we can't eat nor uh, nor poisonous. I think I think this is this is it. This is as far as we're going. Let's found a colony. Do we, do we find a colony now, or do we do we, do we chance it with the last two probes that we have here? We have a breathable atmosphere. I think we have to take this one. Let's found it. Decision is the culmination of the AI's existence. It cannot make it take it lightly. Uh, make it lightly. Founding a colony will end the speed ships, the seed ships journey, and make this planet humanity's new home. Confirm. The landing system controls the seed ship's descent as it splashes gently down to the ocean off the shore of one of the planet's continents. Surviving colonists wake from their sleep chambers and survey their new home. Level fields of alien moss stretch away beneath the blue sky. They build a memorial for the 124 colonists who did not survive the journey and name their new world Garden because of its lush plant life. Colonists begin constructing a settlement with the aid of the seed ship's construction robots. They can leave the ship without breathing gear, wearing light clothing, and the comfortable temperatures. The crushing gravity means they can barely move without mechanical assistance. Oh, it is very high, isn't it? I didn't see that. <laughs> and 133 colonists are killed when partially completed buildings collapse. They build their settlement near a river that flows into one of the planet's oceans, which provides all the water they need. The planet has uh -oh, no accessible metals or other resources. So the colonists cannot maintain a high level of technology, even with the fully intact scientific database. They transition to a technology based on sophisticated stone and wood tools. The planet cannot sustain human life without technological assistance, but before the technology fails, the original colonists genetically engineer their descendants to survive in the very high gravity. 
although parts of the cultural database is missing, it still contains much historical information to instruct the colonists in the building of their society, and much art and literature to inspire them. The, the losses sustained by the colonists make building a new society more difficult. The surviving knowledge of Earth becomes the exclusive property of the priestly caste, locked away in libraries. For most of the population, the Earth becomes Earth becomes the paradise in a mythological fall from grace, and a final reward for hope to hope for, for after living lives in service to the oppressive theocracy. Yeah, what have I done? Uh, uh-huh. Okay, so we got we got a, a score here. We got a score of fifty six seventy nine. Uh, we ended up with a oppressive theocracy is how we uh, ended up here. <laughs> there we go. So not the best. We can see my other missions here. I did a couple other ones. Um, both of them were named Garden. On this one, one of them I landed on some sort of inferno planet. We ended up with a benevolent Neolithic mon monarchy, and the best one we ended up with an information age corporate rule. That was a good one. Uh, this one here. We ended up with, there was a Mesolithic uh, civilization there. Dangerous animals killed a lot of us. And not a lot of folks survived. But, um, yeah, we had a thousand people and then a lot of folks died. But, uh, anyways, fun little game. I'm going to make sure I get it on my phone. I haven't played it on the, the phone version, which I don't know if the phone version is free, actually. Um, but, actually, can I look in here? It is, it is free. Okay, so yeah, it's free on the App Store anyway. And... It is free on Google Play as well. Anyway, there is C-Chip. I'll put a link below. And you can check it out, the, uh, the browser version anyway. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.